Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, in the aftermath of the Wither fight that we had in yesterday's episode, we are left with a handful of resources actually, I haven't put everything away quite yet, but we are most importantly left with this, the Nether Star, which has no purposes other than being a crafting ingredient for a beacon. So we're going to put beacon into the crafting interface here and you will see that this requires a few other ingredients, but the nether star is the most expensive. The others are just blocks of glass and three pieces of obsidian, both of which I believe we should have around here. Do I have any obsidian in my... Oh, I do. I did put some in my storage system. Okay, we'll bring three of those. We'll bring five pieces of glass and we will make our first beacon of the season. So there it is, a beacon. And on its own, it is not going to do all that much because what a beacon requires is a beacon base to place it on before it can have all the effects it is going to. So I'm going to put it down here and we'll right click on it to open up the beacon's GUI. And as you can see here, there are a couple of different parts of this interface which give you hints as to what exactly you are supposed to do. There are some powers that we can select from. Some of these may be familiar to you as potion effects that we can get from elsewhere but one in particular is an effect that you cannot get elsewhere and that is haste so that is kind of what we need to do with this you'll also notice that there are a few materials here a netherite ingot an emerald a diamond a gold ingot and an iron ingot and the implication is that we put them in this slot and then something happens and weirdly i never noticed that those two are both labeled beacon it's a little bit strange so what the beacon implies by these diagrams is that you need to place it on a base of resource blocks in order for it to activate. And you can see that there are multiple tiers. One tier will get you the first level of the primary power. The second tier unlocks the next two powers. The third tier unlocks strength as an option. And the secondary power allows you to unlock regeneration. There is more to that, which we will get to a little bit later. But first of all, we need to figure out what kind of blocks we are placing on this. And we get a hint about that from the beacon itself. As you can see, there are five types of material here that the beacon is requesting. And those are also the five types of material that you can make resource blocks out of to create the beacon base. While other precious materials do exist in the world, of course, there are things like copper, lapis lazuli, and redstone. Those cannot be used to power the beacon or create the beacon base. It has to be some combination of these materials. Luckily, we have quite a lot of most of these materials, actually. So let's run down here where my smelters are smelting merrily away because I realized that I used up all of my gold blocks on the piglin bartering farm and I needed to smelt some gold if we were going to discuss the use of gold blocks in a beacon. So I have a handful of that smelting in here. And over here in my resource barrels, we do have an awful lot of iron blocks. So let's start with those. Over here at the testing grounds in front of our house, we're going to place a three by three area we're using nine iron blocks and we're going to pop a beacon on top of this like so now when we place this on top <laughs> there we go we get the full beacon beam and the advancement to bring home the beacon this thing is now active and as you can see when we look in the beacon gui we can choose from between two of these highlighted effects either speed or haste and you'll notice that when we click either of these the secondary power option changes we could potentially have speed two or haste to if we complete the beacon base and make it a full pyramid. But we're not going to worry about that too much yet. First of all, I'm going to activate speed because that's easier to demonstrate here on the surface. And in order to select this ability, we need to put a resource to sacrifice in the beacon. If we place that there, click this tick button. The iron ingot that I just put in there is consumed. And as you can tell from the slight FOV change while I was there in the GUI, and the icon in the top right, plus a few particle effects emitting from me, we have a little bit of that speed effect. And it's really quite noticeable. This is the equivalent of a speed potion, a potion of swiftness. And we get it for as long as we stay within the radius of the beacon. If I open up my inventory now, you can see that every so often, once this ticks down for four seconds, it'll get refreshed back to the 10 second duration again. And that will last for a radius, I believe, of 20 blocks from the beam of the beacon. Once we get further away, for example, if we head over here to the island where our horses are all leashed up, the speed effect starts to drain away. Even though we can still see the beacon and we're within a decent distance of it, we're not going to be able to get the speed effect over here. And in fact, it's only when we swim back across the river and get to about here 
that the beacon should start to refresh that status effect again. And once again, yeah, it's it's not even doing it here. So as it is, that speed effect doesn't even reach our front door of our house. But once we step into the radius, once again, we get that speed effect. So as I said earlier, the beacon status effects will apply to you in a radius around the beacon beam. And that's quite a significant thing because, of course, the beam emits from the beacon vertically upwards to the full height limit of the world. Basically, if we fly up up to Y320, the highest point at which you can build in the world, if we're within a 20 block radius of the beacon, we'll still be able to get that speed effect. But if we dig downwards, say for example if I dig down into the earth here, I'm down here at Y48, which is really not that far away from the beacon. We can still see the beacon base and the beam rising into the sky, but my speed effect just wore off because underneath the beacon itself, it kind of rounds off into a hemisphere. And so what you end up with is basically a cylinder all the way up the length of the beacon beam, but not below it. And just to illustrate this, we're going to fly up basically as far as the limits of the beacon beam go. And as you can see, we still have the speed effect, even though we're this high up in the world. I think we're about to reach the height limit now. It looks like the beacon's beam actually extends beyond the height limit of the world because we're above the height limit right now. We're at Y500 flying around up here with my elytra, which is actually a little bit scary. And as you can see, the beacon's effect has worn off. But if I dive back down to what I assume is, yeah, roughly the height of the world that we can actually build stuff at, we're at 320 right there, and the beacon effect has kicked back in. So I believe it should be a hemisphere at the top there. Basically, imagine it like a giant hot dog shape emitting from the beacon base and going all the way up to build height. And gosh, it's kind of scary up there, but yes, if you are up at around Y340, if you're flying around slightly higher than we can build in the world, presumably you would still end up getting the effect that the beacon is outputting from the beacon beam as long as you are within that radius. Now let's talk about expanding that radius, because that is one of the things that happens when we layer up tier 2 of the beacon, and we're going to do that with a second layer of material. Now we could continue to do that with iron blocks, because frankly we have an awful lot of them, but of course there are other materials we can use to create the base of this beacon, so I think let's also add a layer of gold. And this is why I've smelted up all of these gold ingots, because we can make a stack of blocks of gold if we want to, and we can use that to create the next layer of our beacon base. But since the beacon base has to be a pyramid, we need to build this larger than the previous layer. We're going to need a 5x5 area made of 25 solid blocks of material, which can still be iron blocks, but like I said, in this case, we are using the gold blocks. By the way, in case you are curious about this, it is entirely possible to mix materials between layers. So we're going to put a block of iron in the middle of our blocks of gold here, and then we're going to put a block of gold in the middle of these blocks of iron, and <laughs> it's going to be hidden by the beacon anyway, but once we put this on here, the beacon will reactivate because it senses all of the resource blocks beneath it, and now when we open up the GUI, we're looking at resistance and jump boost as options. Now right now of course we can only choose one of these four available effects because we haven't unlocked the secondary powers here yet of regeneration and the second level of the primary power but we still have the option of resistance or jump boost and I think for fun we're going to apply jump boost we're going to do that with one gold ingot here and if we pop that in the beacon and activate it there we go, we have Jump Boost 1, the equivalent of drinking a regular Jump Boost potion, which gives us, I believe, a one and a half block height jump. We should be able to jump over this fence, there we go, from a standing start, which is not something you can do normally. We have a different effect on the beacon, oh, you can see the gold block underneath there, of course you can. <laughs> anyway, we have a different effect on the beacon and we have a slightly larger radius for the beacon as well. The beacon's radius should now be 30 blocks, so if I wander over here to the river, the jump boost effect does start to wear off if we're on this island on this side of the river, but we should only need to get about halfway across the river, really, before we start to see that effect. Yeah, there we go, it is rebuffing itself. Not only that, but the effect does last a couple of seconds longer. If we take a look at the refresh here, it turns to 12 seconds instead of 10. So we have a 30 block radius, a 12 second burst of whatever the effect is, and now four effects to choose from instead of just two. But we're not done here because tier three is in sight, and I think for that we're probably going to use emerald blocks. Although I don't quite have as many emerald blocks as I thought, so maybe we'll make tier two out of emerald and we'll make tier three out of gold again. Once again, we can mix and match these materials as much as we want. It's just kind of neat to show it all in different layers. So this time we're gonna start with a 
7 by 7 area of gold blocks, that's 49 gold blocks. We'll add a 5 by 5 of emerald blocks on the top of that. And finally, the beacon on the top. Once again, the beacon will activate, and we now have access to the third tier power, which is pretty much just going to be strength. We'll break down one of these emerald blocks to get one emerald out of it. We'll activate the beacon with strength. We can't access the secondary powers quite yet, but now we have the equivalent of a strength one potion, and we can deal damage to anything in a 40 block radius with that strength effect active. Now, I've been talking about the beacon's effective radius this entire time, but of course, as long as the timer on the potion effect continues, you can run outside of that radius to continue using the effect. So if we wanted to fight something over here, we could just run over and attack it while the strength buff was still in effect. We could take care of the pillager patrol or whatever that's coming over here to attack the fisherman's island. And now if we stand over here, even though we are on the other side of the river, we are comfortably within the radius that that beacon beam provides the strength effect. So <laughs> watch out, pillagers. And of course, regardless of what tier we have underneath this, we can still choose any of the previous effects. So if I wanted to have speed, we could always switch the beacon to that. The beacon will simply react. And now for a very short time, we have strength and swiftness, although the strength is going to wear off now that the beacon is no longer providing it, and we'll just be left with speed. Having three tiers of the beacon now does not increase the level of speed we get. We still only get speed one from this left-hand panel, but where we're going next will get us speed two, because that is the secondary power that we're going to activate when we get all four layers of the beacon. And of course, the last layer has to be made of diamond. By the way, taking down any of these layers, removing any resource block from the pyramid while the beacon is still active will disable the beacon. So you can't just set it and then take all of the blocks away afterwards. The blocks all have to remain in place while the beacon remains active. So I said our final layer was going to be made of diamonds, but I think we don't have quite enough diamonds for a 9 by 9 beacon base. That'll be 81 diamond blocks. In this case, we're just going to top up the diamonds that are in my inventory. It might take one more to activate the beacon, which I know, yes, is a waste of a diamond, but it's just kind of fun to demonstrate that we can do this. Let's get nine blocks of diamond and let's make up the 81 blocks out of our supply of iron blocks here. So there to begin with is our 9x9 nine nine area of iron blocks. This is 81 iron blocks all laid in a square. We'll build the 7x7 seven seven of gold blocks on the top of that. A 5x5 five five of emerald blocks. And finally, a 3x3 three three of diamond blocks with the beacon squarely on the top. And this right here will get us another advancement for activating a tier 4 beacon. There we go, bringing a beacon to full power. Now, if we activate this with a diamond, we can see that not only do we get to choose a primary power, but we get to choose between the secondary power of also having regeneration or having the second tier power of the two choices. And so we could have strength 2, for example. We could have jump boost 2, resistance 2, or haste to. And haste to is probably the most attractive option here because once again, this is a status effect you can't get any other way than a beacon. We're going to cover haste to in more detail in a minute because we're going to take that mining and I will show you the effects of haste to on some of our surroundings. But in the meantime, consider some of the other options you have here at the beacon, like for example, resistance and regeneration, the perfect defensive beacon. As you can see, there's a pulse in the hearts on my hotbar and we have both of the potion icons on screen with resistance and regeneration, we could ward off any threats to our surroundings because honestly, having a little bit of an extra defensive buff and also the power to heal those hearts anytime we wanted to will stave off a lot of trouble. Sometimes when people like to raid ocean monuments, they will go in with a beacon set up over the top of the monument, granting them resistance and regeneration within a 50 block radius, which is of course the maximum radius of the beacon. Now we have all four tiers. It basically adds 10 blocks of the radius every time you add a tier to a beacon. And of course, having a 50 block radius even underneath the beacon means that it should affect most of the area inside an ocean monument if you're swimming around with regeneration and resistance. Having speed two around your base is another option. We're going to activate that now. And once again, we're going to have a few more seconds of resistance and regen before those wear off. But having speed two and running around your base like this is honestly quite an attractive prospect if you've got a large, wide ranging base that you need to get around in a hurry. The problem then, of course, becomes that the radius of a beacon isn't going to last all that far. Once you've run 50 blocks that way, the speed two effect disappears. But you can probably get another 50 blocks or so before the potion effect wears off. So for 
for sprinting, this is kind of the stuff you need. But the only way of expanding the beacon's radius beyond this is to get another beacon. So if you wanted a large, wide-ranging base to have a bunch of speed buffs to get you around, you're probably better off drinking potions that are going to last for three minutes while you do some running around, or you'd probably have to get hold of a lot more beacons, which it's pretty easy to fight the wither once you have a decent wither skeleton farm and know some of the tricks to beating it, which a few folks in the comments of yesterday's video certainly did. But instead, we probably need to address this. Yes, you can use a netherite ingot to activate a beacon. Should you? Absolutely not, because of how finite netherite is. To be honest, the diamond was a bit of a stretch, but this also indicates that you can use full blocks of netherite to activate a beacon. Yes, if you get enough netherite ingots, it is possible to make a resource block out of netherite, and it can be turned back into netherite ingots, much like the rest of the resource blocks can, but it is a pretty expensive block to build a full beacon out of. Getting that much netherite requires you to mine a total of 5,904 ancient debris, and if you want to know how I know, just watch the previous season of the Minecraft Survival Guide where I did it. I doubt we will be making a full netherite beacon in this season of the Minecraft Survival Guide, but we will get hold of some netherite blocks in future, so maybe we can make ourselves a netherite beacon. There are many reasons that we shouldn't do that, but maybe we'll do it at some stage. In the meantime though, back down here in my storage system where the speed effect is still active, it's going to wear off in a second or two here, I barely have enough ancient debris and netherite scrap to make another ingot and a half of netherite, so definitely not going to be spending it on this today. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to re-equip my netherite sword that I left here in the chest when I swapped it for the smite one in the last episode, and we're going to upgrade my axe. Because frankly, it's time we upgraded something else to netherite, I've been sitting on this one for a little while, and I do a lot of tree chopping, so <laughs> netherite silk touch axe, let's go. But anyway, enough about the theory of beacons. How are we actually going to use these in practice? Well, first of all, we're probably going to use iron or gold as the beacon base. Fun though it is to splash our cash around and gosh, it does look really cool having the full beacon set up with four tiers of material. Iron and gold are simply the most practical blocks to make these out of, or emeralds if you do a lot of villager trading, but personally, I like to keep the emerald blocks around so that I can use the emeralds, trade with villagers, and acquire a bunch of other resources from them. Diamonds is a bit of a flex, frankly, not quite as much of a flex as netherite, but it's honestly one of the more flexy things you can do because you have to get hold of a decent amount of diamonds, and the only way to get hold of diamonds for diamond blocks is to go mining for them manually. The remaining two materials, iron and gold, are simply the two that it's easier to acquire in larger quantities. We haven't made a full-on gold farm in this series yet, but you can end up with some pretty productive gold farms if you start farming zombie piglins for them, and gold also has the advantage of being the resource block that it is fastest to mine, meaning it's a little bit easier to make beacons out of gold if you're moving them around a lot because you will save yourself a bit of time mining up all of these resource blocks, whereas iron is a little bit tougher, it has a slightly longer time to break, and it will take a little bit longer to pick up all the blocks again once you've used your beacon and you want to move it elsewhere. But of course, out of the available materials, iron is simply the cheapest. We've had an iron farm since the early days of this world, we've encountered huge veins of iron, and frankly, once you've reached the diamond and netherite tiers of tools, the only thing you need to use iron for is crafting redstone components like hoppers and pistons and so forth, plus maybe a little bit of tools and armor creation if you want to decorate some armor stands. But that's what the iron farm is for, and that's why I have an entire barrel that's more or less full of blocks of iron, so that we can use them for massive things like beacons. So we're going to put all of the remaining blocks of resources and stuff back in here. We're probably going to bring some gold with us for this next example, because we're going to bring nine blocks of gold. We're going to make a tier one beacon and use the haste method to help us mine some terracotta. Before we go anywhere, though, we will need to upgrade our pickaxes one more time, and hopefully we should have some efficiency four books in here that will allow us to do that. If not, I might have to spend a bit of time. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to spend a bit of time here at the enchanting table getting an efficiency for book. And after much scrounging and combining of books, we need to spend 20 levels to upgrade that pickaxe and eight levels. I think we're probably going to go with the silk touch one this time around. And in for a penny, in for a pound. Why not rename this one as well? We're going to call this one the Ace of Hearts. And the fortune pickaxe is going to require 23 levels with that other book. So we're going to have to save that for another time, but we need efficiency five on this one eventually as well. So with that done and the beacon all packed away in the ender chest, meet me in the Badlands. So over here at the tiny Badlands, the one that's nearby the desert temple that I actually have a nether portal out to, I've set up my beacon, given it the haste effect, and it's time to start mining out some terracotta. And we need to do this with an efficiency five pickaxe, 
of diamond tier or better. So diamond or netherite will do, but as you can see now, we're able to mine out all of the terracotta in the surrounding area pretty much instantaneously. And naturally, this isn't our first time instantly mining blocks. We've been able to do it with sand and a shovel this entire time. Not to mention using shears or a hoe on leaves, or even an efficient enough shovel on dirt. We've been able to instamine a lot of materials already, but the haste effect from a beacon makes it possible to mine out materials that we couldn't instantly mine before. And this is honestly a difference between efficiency 4 and efficiency 5. You only need haste 1 on the beacon, which is why we've only brought 9 blocks of gold out with us, but if I use efficiency 4 on the terracotta around here, it breaks fast, but it doesn't break instantly. If we switch now to my silk touch pickaxe, we're able to mine a lot more very, very quickly. The haste effect from a tier 1 beacon allows you to mine terracotta, all variants of coloured terracotta, and also basalt and polished basalt if you want to get hold of some of those. Now granted, polished basalt is a crafted block, so in order to mine some of that, you'd need to craft it and place it first, but basalt in soul sand valleys or basalt deltas can be mined very easily easily using a beacon like this. But there is a problem with that. Because if we wanted to set up a beacon to mine the basalt here in the nether, let's use this as an example. We'll pop down our beacon, we'll get the base of our nine blocks of gold already, we'll throw that there and we'll add a... wait a second, the beacon beam isn't coming on. And there's a good reason for that, because the beacon needs full access to the sky in order for the beacon beam to activate. You can't activate it in a cave without having a tunnel dug out basically all the way to the surface. And here in the nether, that is made doubly complicated by the fact that we're standing in a giant cavern. Is it possible for the beacon beam to travel up to the sky in the nether? Well, technically, yes. Standing on top of the beacon here, we're going to pillar up towards the nether ceiling and we're going to do what we should probably never do in Minecraft and dig straight upwards. Now, we're going to be very careful about this, and if I hear lava above me, or if I see the telltale drip of lava above me, I am going to try and place a block in there as fast as I possibly can. But eventually, as we dig up through the nether ceiling, we should start to find that eventually we come across bedrock. And if there is an uninterrupted path to bedrock from the beacon below, the beam will still activate, because technically it treats the bedrock as though it's transparent, and it can go through it, which means now we can activate the haste effect here in our beacon and instamine the basalt that's around us. And all it took was a death-defying pillar upwards and no lava directly above us. It is also possible for occasional blocks of netherrack to generate intermingled with the bedrock up there, which makes it very, very difficult to tell if the beacon beam is going to go through there or not. But if you light a piece of TNT nearby and obviously get to a safe distance, it's possible for the TNT explosion to destroy blocks of netherrack that are intermingled with the bedrock up there. Say, for example, that the bedrock is surrounding it on all sides like that, but we had one piece of netherrack there. Lighting some TNT here could still destroy this piece of netherrack whilst obviously leaving the bedrock around it intact. So it is still possible to clear a path for a beacon beam anywhere in the nether, but frankly, it's a little bit of a dangerous environment to be using a beacon in the first place. Now, while all the basalt around here is instaminable, you'll notice that the blackstone is is not. With haste 1, it's only possible to instantly mine a couple of blocks that we couldn't before. Basalt and terracotta is basically it, and the stone variants are untouched by this effect. But that all changes when we get haste 2. Naturally, this is going to require returning to our barrel of iron blocks here, because I don't really have enough resource blocks of other kinds, and we're going to bring ourselves two stacks and 36 iron blocks. That is the exact amount that you will need to create a full tier 4 beacon. That is 164 blocks, plus make sure you bring at least one thing to activate it with because I've lost count of the amount of times I've gone and set up a beacon and then thought I brought enough iron but then of course I brought enough iron for the beacon base and not enough to activate it with. And we're gonna bring all that back here to the dripstone cave base. It's been a while and I've honestly neglected this place. I really want to do a bit more building around here but if we want to start sculpting the terrain and moving some of these blocks around in larger quantities I feel like it makes sense to set up a beacon here with haste and I don't just mean quickly I mean with with the haste 2 effect that's going to allow us to instamine the stone and all the stone variants around here. The granite, the andesite, the diorite, all of that stuff, probably even the dripstone as well, although I haven't actually tried that. And so I think in order for us to get the maximum effect out of our beacon, we want to set it up somewhere fairly central in the cave. So 
I'm thinking probably over here, as long as obviously we don't have to dig up all the way through this massive pillar of dripstone. So let's say we do this just offset from the pillar of dripstone, maybe somewhere down here. In fact, it's kind of cool that we still have the conduit set up in here because then we'd also add conduit power to our mining speed, which wouldn't do all that much, but it would definitely help a little. So I'm going to block off the flow of the water here. We're going to dig down, I guess, about here. This makes probably the most sense. And we're going to try and dig ourselves down as far as possible possible in the world. We're going to do this the safe way, making sure that we dig down along a border between two blocks so that we don't end up falling into areas like this, which are inevitably going to be teeming with mobs because I haven't lit up much of the space down here. Naturally, if the beacon's effect radiates outwards from the beacon beam, we're going to want to build this as low down in the world as possible because effectively we get a cylinder of effect from the beacon on upwards. But we're going to stop digging down at this point. We don't really need to put the beacon any further down than this because haste to unfortunately will not allow us to instantly mine deep slate. It'll save us a bit of time mining the deep slate. It does improve the time to break on deep slate, but honestly, it doesn't do enough as far as going all the way to insta mining. Now, since this area is completely encased in stone, which is pretty much ideal for what we want to do, we're going to set up a 3x3 area here, and at the top of that is going to be the 3x3 of the top tier of the beacon base basically so we need to dig down three more layers from that we've got one two three and down here is where we need to start preparing the area for our nine by nine base then we'll finish laying out the beacon base in this area and we'll go up with a seven by seven a five by five a three by three and pop the beacon on top then we need to make sure that we've taken the coordinates of where the beacon is because we'll probably need to dig down into the cavern from above in order to make sure this beacon has access to the sky okay we'll put our beacon there we won't be able to activate it yet but we just need to take wow okay <laughs> all right apparently it was planning on the beacon being a little more dramatic so negative 10 28 11 86 is the surface coordinate that we need to be digging down from and now i've got to hope that i brought enough fireworks to get me out of here <laughs> so right here on the surface 128 blocks above where that beacon is we're gonna dig straight down through the ceiling here and once we hit dripstone we'll know that we need to activate our wings because there's a massive fall underneath us but that has activated the beacon beam here in the cave and now all we need to do is go down there throw an ingot in there assign it haste 2 and watch the magic happen down here at our beacon let's give it the haste 2 treatment and now as we look around us there's some very inviting stone in this neighborhood which we can now insta mine using our silk touch pickaxe because we still have efficiency five on this thing we also have haste two now which naturally means that any ore blocks we find in this area are going to be uncovered pretty quickly but it will get us tons and tons of building material now as i mentioned while it does help us break deep slate a little bit faster, unfortunately, we're not going to find that this helps us insta mine deep slate. So as far as mining for diamonds is concerned, you're pretty much restricted to the stone layers if you're using a beacon. You won't be able to insta mine anything low enough down to get tons and tons of diamonds this way. But you'll still get a decent chunk of other resources. And frankly, for requiring building materials, this method is going to be second to none. Now, our fortune pickaxe only has efficiency four on it right now. So when it comes to getting cobblestone, we're probably going to have to get efficiency five on this thing as soon as we possibly can but that's nothing that a little bit of time spent at the ender ender won't fix and further up in here with the effect still reaching us from the beacon beam we can use our newfound haste effects to change what we want about the surface terrain here obviously it's already going to work on stuff like dirt because we were insta mining that with a shovel to begin with but as we can see the drip stone is also affected and other resources like blackstone prismarine all of those will be affected by haste 2 and efficiency five allowing you to insta mine them and start to sculpt the terrain however you like which means that we can make some pretty big changes around here but folks that's where we're going to leave it for this episode of the minecraft survival guide i do hope you've enjoyed this look at beacons and have fun haste mining in your own worlds don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you folks soon take care bye for now <laughs>